Hi, uh, welcome to Paint Night Live. I'm Tamara, an artist here at Plaid. And tonight I'm going to show you how to paint Jolly Winter Gnome in about an hour with folk art. So. And we're live here in the studio tonight. So we are using our Let's Paint with Plaid, um, Let's Paint Live kit. So Tamara's gonna only be using colors from that kit and we've got that linked in the description box. So if you guys need any um, help or if you want us to repeat any colors along the way, just let us know and I'll pause and ask Tamara. And that goes for any other questions you may have tonight. Yes. All right, so to start, I'm going to begin with the Dutch Aqua and I'm just going to place some here on the palette paper. And before we start painting in the background, we're going to loosely sketch in the gnome. Um, so I'm going to take one of these smaller brushes, just get it a little wet. Paper towels. All right. And we're going to take some of this Dutch Aqua, and we want to have this kind of wavy hat. So we're going to start by putting in the right corner, just sketch out a loose circle there. It doesn't need to be perfect. We're going to paint over it. This is just that we don't waste a lot of time in paint painting the background that we don't need painted. So from your little ball, you're going to start at the top and we're going to swing. We're going to swing around nice big top of the hat here. And then you're gonna come right next to it and do another one just inside. And hats, they're, they're gonna start pointy and they're going to get wider as they go down. So we're gonna spread those lines out. And then you're going to add two bubbles, two curves, almost like parentheses, on this side. And then one here and one here. It doesn't have to be perfectly even, it's a hat. It's not, it's going, you know, don't worry about getting yours exactly right. So this hat's pulled pretty far down on his face, and we're not going to draw on the face, but you want the hat to take up about two-thirds of your canvas. Before you keep going, Tamara, will you move all your stuff um, to your right so that we can have the, the final one in oh, the shot? Oh, yes. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. All right. So uh, once you have in this hat, um, We've done, we've done the, the top of the hat and two curves, and we're just gonna make a little mark down here for where the side of the hat's going to go. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, pop that smaller brush in the water, and we are going to need to add to the palette aqua. I'm gonna put that next to the, the Dutch aqua. And we're going to take some of the navy and we're gonna put that just next to the aqua. We're gonna do a little bit of blending here. I can get that out. There we go. All right. So with the larger brush, you're going to start in the aqua And we're going to paint outside of the hat. And you just want to start putting in the color. I like to have a lot of um, brush strokes in my backgrounds. So you don't have to worry about painting all straight or super um, even or in one direction. I kind of like to have the brush strokes giving it a lot of movement in the background. You can paint the edges if you want. Uh, it's easier to paint them as you go. I'm not going to paint them all tonight, but that always makes it nice when you hang your finished painting up on the wall. So with the aqua, we're starting in the center of both sides. And then we're going to get into some fun blending. You want to work quick at this part because you don't want the paint to start drying. You want to be able to blend it a little bit. So now that we have a good bit of aqua on here, I'm going to not clean my brush and I'm going to come into the lighter color and we're gonna start blending that in. 
and still adding in some nice brush strokes. Don't worry if you go over your hat drawing a little because you're going to paint over that later. And as I go up, I'm going to keep adding the lighter aqua. Um, to the darker aqua. You're going to do this on both sides of the hat. Getting in some brush strokes in there. So coming back down to the center with the with the aqua in the center. And we're going to do the same thing that we did with the Dutch aqua, but we're going to do it with the navy. So we're going to take a little bit of the aqua and a little bit of the navy on the brush, and we're going to start at the bottom, and we are going to blend that into the teal. And here I'm just going straight down. The beard's going to cover it. I'm just going straight down from the hat. <coughs> Excuse me. And then again on this side. A little bit of aqua, a little bit of navy. And where those two colors come together, we just want to blend it. And just like that, you have your nice snowy swirly sky background going. So you do want the paint to be dry before you start painting in the hat. So um, we're going to take the heat pen and we're going to just drop a, we're going to just dry this off a little bit, especially right here around the hat. Just to help this dry off. All right. So now that we have um, dried the teal, you can see right along the edges here, it's dry. Um, we're going to grab some of the cardinal red, the bright pink, and the berry wine, and we're going to put these three colors next to each other on the palette. So here we'll do the berry wine. We're going to do a pretty good amount of cardinal red in the center. And on the side, we're going to go with the light pink. So we're going to rinse off this brush here that we did the background with. Make sure you get the teal off of it. We'll just dry that off here. All right, so starting with the cardinal red, you're just going to begin at the top of your hat, and we're going to start filling this in. I'm using the, the same large brush I used on the background. You turn it sideways to draw the line, and then you can flatten it out to fill in. And we're going to give it a nice coat of red to blend into because we're going to do blending and texture again. So get you a nice red hat going on here.
And it's okay to cover up some of the teal. We want to get rid of the white. That's our main goal. So if you have to go over that a little bit to make sure you get all that all the white covered. And we talked about the two curves on each side. So I'm going to block that in. And then on the original, you can see that the brim of the hat, it comes up over his nose. So all we're going to do is we're going to start to come in the side, make a hill, and come back to the side. And you're going to paint all of this red. We're leaving some space for the brim of the hat later. So again, you're working a little quickly because we don't want the paint to dry. So I've got a nice bit of red paint on here. And first, I'm going to not clean the brush. I'm going to take some of this pink. And on the right side of the hat, I'm going to blend the pink in. This isn't going to be a super huge color difference. It's just to add a little bit of texture and dimension to the hat. So just pick up some pink and blend it in with those nice brush strokes like we used on the background on the right side. When you get to the top of the hat, we're just going to keep that mostly like right along the top edge. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then before I move on to the other color, I'm going to take some more of that pink. And I'm going to add a few more brush strokes on the right, and I'm not going to blend them in very much. We're going to leave some of that pink showing to just be a little bit of a stronger highlight. Okay, so I'm just going to take my brush and I'm going to wipe some of this extra paint off. I'm not going to clean it, but now that I've got some of the pink off, we're going to come into the berry wine color. And this, you want to kind of go a little bit at a time because it's, dark, it's much darker. You're going to do the same thing on the left side of the hat. You're just going to add in, blend in some of this berry wine and keeping this on the left. And we're just going to have nice brush strokes loose brush strokes in there. And then in the center, you can use the red to bring those two colors together. You don't want it to be over blended, so you don't you're not trying to make all the brush strokes go away or make the colors completely seamless. We're just trying to add some dimension to your hat. All right, so now we're going to clean that brush off again. And I'm going to take a smaller flat brush and we're going to add some white to the palette. I'm going to come down here because we're going to use the white in multiple places. So take a little bit of white there. And to do the nose, I'm going to get a little bit of pink on my brush and a little bit of white and make a light pink for his nose. I think I'm going to add a little bit of red just to warm it up too. So I like to do the nose first because it's very easy to paint over it and it's going to be harder to paint over with a lighter color. So you can actually go pretty crazy with your oval here because you can tone it down with the other colors. So following the shape of the hat, we're going to pop a little nose under that hill that we left. Just adding in a little bit of a highlight here. 
So we're gonna leave the nose there for a minute. Right next to the white. And I like to do this part with a big brush so we can get a lot of texture in it. So I'm going to take a little bit of white and gray and we're going to start light and with a little bit of this gray on your brush that you've mixed here. You want to come from the nose and you want the swoops for the beard to come out. So we're going to come from the nose and it's curving. So right at the center it's almost straight down but as you work your way out these legs they're like almost like little spider legs. They're curving out and then towards the bottom of the nose we're going to take one on each side. It looks like my tail is a little wet. That's okay. And then we're going to curve it out and then swoop it up. So we're kicking up a little tail there. I'll do that a couple of times towards the end on each side. So we've kind of mapped in where our beard is going to be. Got a lot of compliments, how gorgeous this is. Oh, that's good. How people are having fun. So I'm going in with the white and I'm blending it into those gray lines while they're wet. Those gray lines are like a little map for us to follow. So while we have two here that are going to be swooping out, that third line down, we're going to just fill in the beard here. And I'm going to alternate. I'm blending in gray and white. It looks like the teal is still pretty wet right here. I'm going to hit this just to dry it off a little so we don't get too much blue in the beard. It works so fast. We really want to kind of have thick paint when you're doing this part. This is a nice way to build up the texture of the hair so that when you are looking at the painting up close, it's like you can almost see the hair. So we're going to build up those layers and you're going to let the paint be streaky. Don't over blend it. And I'm just working with my brush sideways and as I come to the end of the beard I'm pulling my brush away from the canvas. We've got a question, what color would be best if I don't want a pink nose, but more of a brown nose? Um, I don't have the, all of the colors out with me, um, but if you want it to be more brown, I would, you could use brown and white, but I would still put like a little bit of pink or red in it just to give it some life. more white paint for my beard. And we'll come back and add a little bit more to this 
after it starts to dry, but you don't have to dry it right now. We can work on something else and come back to this. So we got a nice luscious layer of beard happening here with a little bit of gray and white. All right, so while that layer of beard is drying, you can go, you're gonna go ahead and clean off your brush. And now we're going to work on the band and the pom-pom on the hat. So I'm gonna go right under my white because we're gonna be doing some blending with white. And this is the lime green. We're gonna put a little bit of that here. And I'm gonna go back to the, the flat brush that's a little bit smaller. And this green by itself, it's a little too intense for me for this. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of white here. We're just gonna blend in a little bit of white. And since we really like the brush strokes, we're not going to blend it all the way in. We're just gonna mix some of it here. And so for the pom-pom ball, everybody's always like, I can't draw a circle. So the good news is you don't have to here. Um, you want it to be kind of blobby and poofy. So it's circle-esque. And I'm almost doing like little parentheses over and over. So once you have the base of that in, I'm gonna grab some plain white down here by the teal, and we're going to swirl this in to your pom-pom hat. All right, so come back to your mixture of lime and white down here, and we're going to do the brim of the hat. So this red is still a bit wet here. Um, you may not touch it, but if you're worried about, I'm not going to dry it, but if you're worried about touching, you can make sure you can blow dry your painting first. So we're going to come in between the hat and the beard, and we're going to follow our little hill up. And just take your time around that curve. Start here. And then we're going to follow that here. So I'm going back in with some extra white on and I'm highlighting this and I actually think I want to make my band a little bit taller. And blending that white in I'm gonna add a little darker green to the bottom part of this band. And you want the band of the hat to come a little bit past the hat, the edge of the hat. So I'm just coming in here and just going out just a little bit past the end. That paint was wet, but that's okay. I'm just gonna get some more on the brush and just lightly blend that there. So we're gonna clean that lime green off. Um, 
I, we used this um, navy earlier. I'm using navy instead of black on this to kind of have the outlines feel and the shadows feel a little softer. So I'm going to come in with, my, with a much smaller brush first to start. And then just so that the navy feels a little bit darker, I'm gonna take some of this navy and I'm gonna take a little bit of this berry wine and I'm gonna mix it together. It's going to make a really rich dark color. And it's a little less harsh than just using black. It's a little, a little mysterious and elegant, little gnome. And I'm going to go in and not stick my hand on the beard. And we're going to start by filling in the space between the nose. And so if you feel like your nose is a little too big, this is how you can bring it down. So I'm going to start by filling this in, but this outline is actually going to carry across the bottom of the hat. And I'm using a very small flat brush. This one is number six flat. And we will just gently underline the bottom of this hat brim. And we're going to carry that all the way to either edge. and then fill in the space on either side of the nose. And then while you're doing that, go ahead and go all the way around the nose. And the beard is still working on drying in here, but I'm gonna go ahead and bring in these um, navy lines into the beard. So for these, I'm gonna start at the bottom and just gently pull them in with just the navy here. And this is okay if your beard is wet because we want these colors to blend a little bit. So I'm gonna go towards the ends of the mustache part of the beard. Just while I have this little brush out. So I'm gonna put that one away. Um, I wanna work bigger for the beard, so I'm gonna go back to the biggest brush with the white paint, maybe with a little gray on it. And you're going to add more streaks, but we're gonna let that navy sort of blend in and become part of the shadows. This is adding a little more dimension and texture to the beard. Just like we did before, it's not going to be just white. We're going to add in some of the gray too. And then once again, adding those nice thick lines of beard and mustache back in for layer two.
And if you feel like you blended out too much of your navy, you can just come right back up here and grab a little bit more. But you don't want the beard to be too blue, but you can go in and add a little bit of darkness like this. If it starts to get too dark on you, what you wanna do is dry it and then come back over it with white. If you come over it with white while the paint is wet, it's just going to keep turning blue on you. So you'll wanna just let that dry and then build up with the whites and the grays again. So coming back to this mixture of navy and berry, I'm gonna make a little bit more. Actually, I'm gonna to switch to the, the more medium flat brush. I really like this one. So we're gonna get a little more navy and a little more berry. And so what you wanna do is when you, when you have the paint on this brush, you just wanna flatten out your brush so that you're, you're gonna have more of a a flatter line that you can draw with this. And I'm going to start here at the brim of the hat where we were, and I'm just going to give us a bit of a wavy line on this side and on this side of the hat because it's fabric, it's folded, you don't want it to be too steady. And then partially up, I'm just going to come in on either side like there's a little fold. On the left I went in to the side and on the right I kind of went up you can do them both to the side. You can kind of look at the shape that you have and see what feels right. And then I'm not gonna outline the whole top of the hat because that's gonna get too heavy, but we're going to do right along where the green meets the red with the brush turned sideways, and I'm just going to partially bring it in, leaving that top part alone so that it's a little bit brighter there. And then we'll come here and we'll do the same thing with the hat. Now for the pom-pom to help with that kind of texture, it's not a solid piece. I'm going to do the same thing where I talked about the parentheses before. So you can kind of make parentheses shapes and it doesn't even have to be perfect. You don't have to necessarily have it outlined like you do on the flat. You want it to kind of feel like loose and textured. So I'm kind of being a little wild with it. And then, you know, maybe one or two on the hat there. So for the next part, coming back here, I'm just going to pull in a little bit more berry because we're going to work on the hat now. So just making it just a little redder here. And same thing with a flat brush. And we are going to work on the hat. We, d we don't want to outline the whole thing. So we're going to do the underneath side here where the pom-pom meets the hat. I'm going to turn it sideways and you want to turn your brush as you go. So I'm only doing that top, the, the bottom part of the top of the hat. And then on the left side of the hat where it's a little bit darker, we'll do more. So I'm going to start at the bottom here, turning the brush sideways. And I'm going to let it overlap a little bit so it mimics a fold in the fabric. And then we'll go to one more parentheses here. And then we're going to go about halfway here, letting that top part stay lighter. On the right side of the hat where we have more highlight, I'm just gonna do a little bit on the bottom section. I'll just bring that in a little bit. So that's all of the, the extra outlining that we're going to do on the hat. Um, you can use also this berry and wine mixture, or the navy and berry wine mixture. And on the edges of the beard, I just added a little bit more darkness and it's going to be the same technique. Flatten your brush out on the palette. And for these, I like to start on the inside and work my way out. And as you get to the end, gently lift your brush away from the canvas and that's how you'll keep it from being too thick and stopping suddenly. So you're just going to kick that right off the edge. I'm going to do this on either side. 
On the mustache parts, I'm going to keep it to the underneath. And then we'll just do the sides of that. And if you feel like your lines are too blue and light, we can come back here with a little bit of berry mixed in and you can reinforce those darks. So this is where the really fun stuff starts to happen. So we've got our gnome basically in here. And we're going to start working on the decorations of the hat. I am going to use this brush for the whole thing. We're going to use the, um, the, the flat part of the brush here to make these stripes and the little snowflake stitches. And we will use the back of the paintbrush to make the dots. So this is a really fun way to kind of tie all of the colors together. So I'm gonna make a little bit more pink here. I'm gonna add a little red to it so it matches the hat. And then we're gonna come back and add in the white. And I'm just going to take the brush and we'll start with the snowflakes at the bottom. And all I'm doing is one, two, and then we're going, so that's the top part of your snowflake and then you need an X. Three, four, five, six. And you're just going to follow the shape of your hat and put those in. And you're just kind of eyeballing this, you know, you're not trying, you don't have to follow it exactly. Your hat might be thinner or wider. So I start in the center and work my way out. So I feel like I can adjust as I go to the sides. I want to have a couple of rows of snowflakes. So I'm going to go about halfway up. And again, start in the center and work your way out. One, two, three, four, five, six. And pop in another row of snowflakes. we can do maybe one more on this inside of this curve. And then we won't really have room for a whole row, but I just put one here. It kind of implies that there is another row of snowflakes. So we'll We'll put one more snowflake towards the top here. And so I don't go over the edges. A thing that you can do, since they're going to be stacked into a line, you can go over the center a little bit and let them cross in the middle. So while I have some pink on my brush, we're going to add some stripes. And the stripes are done much the same way. You're going to take your flat brush and I'm going to, you don't have to follow this pattern exactly. I like to kind of start with something and then I just kind of fill in as I go. So I'm going to go between these two snowflakes and I'm going to have all of the lines are going to be slightly tilted and we're just going to stamp them and I'm going to keep it angled. It's almost like you're using your paintbrush as a stamp. And we're just going to keep those tilted.
It gets kind of weird where it comes around the curve. I'm going to go like that. And we'll come up here. And maybe one here. And a couple right there. So we're going to clean off the pink and grab you another color. You want to stick to the colors that are already in your painting um, so it just feels really cohesive. So I'm going to come here to the lime green now and we want it to be pretty light, pretty pastel. So mixing the white and the lime again. And for fun, I'm gonna tilt these the opposite direction. So you don't have to line them up perfectly. This is just a painting for fun, it's not math. But if it makes you feel like you have a pattern, you can gently place them close to where you put the others. And we're gonna do the same thing. Stamp with the lime green pastel mix. And here I think I'll go underneath. And then while I am working, well, you can go ahead and clean off your brush. We're going to take the back of the brush while we're in the greens and we will go ahead and let me just get a paper towel. All right, we'll go ahead and taking the back of the brush, dipping that in the paint. And we're just gonna put a fun little green dot in the center of your little knit snowflakes. to give it some fun contrast. And then we'll wipe off that end here so you don't get paint all over your hands. And then I'm gonna come over to this aqua that we were using in the blending of the background, this light aqua, Dutch aqua, and I want to just add like some of these snowflakes. So I'm going to spread them around. So here it looks like we have a little bit of room. And you don't want to do too many of these in a row without refreshing because they'll gradually get smaller as they go. So um, a good tip is starting in the center and working your way out because then it's almost like they're getting smaller because they're going around the hat. And I think we'll go here. So kind of the max is two or three if you want them to stay around the same size. I think we'll put some right here. And then the last thing we'll do is we will use the back of the brush and some white. And we'll add some white spots. And as you, you just want to keep adding some accents until your hat feels generally kind of full. It doesn't, you don't want to have any awkward empty spaces, but you also don't have to um, 
cram it all the way to the brim. So here with the white, I'm just kind of looking for spaces that feel like a little bit empty and just to complete the pattern. And here where it bends, where the hat's bending, I'm just going in so it's like the fabric's folded. I think that looks pretty good. So go ahead and clean off the brush here, the back of the brush. Now, the fun part is the snow. Um, we're going to make a little bit of a mess. I'm going to take a paper towel or two. So you're going to want something to protect the majority of your painting. If this, if you get a little bit of splatter on the gnome, it doesn't matter. He is in the snow. But we're just going to take the same brush. We're going to get it wet. And you don't want to take much of the water off. I'm just going to lay this here. I'm not going to put it on top of the painting because it's wet and I don't want to pull the paint off. But then holding, holding my brush here, I'm just going to tap it. And generally trying to protect most of the painting. And just tap it a few times. So we're not going to go too crazy because we're going to add some more. So I'm going to stop here with the splatter. And this, the, the cool thing is if there's a splatter that you don't like the way it landed, in this next step you're going to be able to fix it. So going back to my smaller brush, I'm going to come in with this aqua and we want to have some larger snowflakes. And so maybe right here where it got a little crowded, I'm just going to take the aqua and I'm just going to swirl the brush around in a circle shape. And you want to add a few of these, so if you don't have anything that you want to cover, just start sprinkling them in randomly. It's a good way to hide anything where the splatter got too heavy. If you have an empty space, it is also a good place to add one. And we're just doing this with the light aqua right now. We'll sprinkle a few of these bigger snowflakes around your background. I'll wipe the excess paint off and then I'm going to come in with some white and you're going to do it again on top but you're not going to, you don't want to over blend it and you don't want it to be as big. So I'm going to keep it a little bit smaller than the first circle I did. And just hit the center of these. And then we'll wipe that paint off. And then you can use the back of the brush technique. If you feel like you still need a few snowflakes but it's not worth risking your painting, this is when you can kind of add some more medium ones with the back of your brush. And anywhere that you just feel like there's not maybe enough going on, just pop a few more snowflakes in in the empty spaces. All right. And then just to add the final touch, we'll come back with the white paint and we're going to add a nice bright highlight to his nose. And we're going to add a few highlights to the pom poms here. And then just a little bit on this very top of the hat, I'm going to flatten this out a little bit. Just the littlest bit of white right here, just a little highlight. And again on this part at the top of the hat, just a tiny, tiny, actually I want to make that pink. Just a little bit of a highlight on the top. And there you have it. So last thing you're going to do is sign your painting. I'll use one of these flat brushes, take a little bit of paint, 
I'm going to mix some teal and some navy here. And I'm just going to pop my initials there in the bottom. I'll put it right here today. And you are done. You have a joyful gnome. Hey, very cool. Um, you can find the project instructions on platonline.com and all the supply list. If you guys want to go back and watch this painting again, it'll be here on YouTube and Facebook for you to go back and watch. All right. Until next time. Bye, guys.